Wow, how is this even possible? I can have my yard go hook up to the front. And this is just my guess, I don't know. And For stability? Yeah, of course. Pick this up and then you guys kind of tandemly go straight to get it out of the way. Where do you want, where's the end goal for this? So the end goal would be to put it on the ready line, uh, best case scenario, which was when you came in the main gate, right on the right hand side, that open spot over there. But in order to do that, you're gonna have to go all the way out and come back through. How, did he just curve this like at 20 miles an hour? Uh, he's, we already suspended him, but. That's a suspension and a drug test. No, no, he went to go take the first. I, I have another idea, it might be easier. Because walking backwards with him, we'd have to be in perfect sync and it can go wrong. Yeah. I was thinking of lifting up the rear of the trailer, putting this back underneath, chaining it, caging the brakes to release the uh, the air, just to get him out of here. Uh, You're obviously not going to go on the freeway like that, but no, to go no, straight no. and make a left. I just couldn't figure out how to get this back underneath because it knocked all the welds off. Like, uh, you know what I mean? To knock it back straight. I mean, we have a forklift. I guess to push it back under, like if you lift it up to... Well, what I'm gonna do is, right around here is I just lift this up, right? Yeah. And using another line, I can just kind of like, yeah, winch it. Just make it, it doesn't have to be pretty. No, yeah, yeah, just enough for... But I'm gonna just get it straight, and then chain bind the rear in an X fashion, so we can't go left and right and do the same up front, just to go yeah, straight yeah. and left. That'll be fine. Because I don't know about driving backwards with my boom in the air with the lines up and everything like that it's just let me try that got my work cut out for me so i broke right there at the hangers where the leaf springs are it's all jacked up mm -mm. Alright guys, I am currently backing up in reverse since we've been doing these weird tight jobs a lot lately. Nothing compared to that excavator, but once I get in between these walls, I'll show you. Um, I can do it off the front and lift up the trailer. It's empty. That's no problem for Hulk. The issue is aligning that axle completely broken off in every sense of the word and slightly stuck on one weld part. So I want to utilize my deck winch and an auxiliary line for a low pull. That way I can get it as straight as possible underneath the trailer. And this is what it looks like on my end. Just got inches to play with. And once I get that axle as close as I can to the rear and center, all right, good, I made it off the hard part. I'm going to chain it up and that's going to be enough of a band-aid fix to get homeboy out of here uh, to the entrance of the facility where they can work on it all right now this is good so that d-ring is going to go to there yeah what's this up? is good what's up all bad all, <laughs> all bad man so this, this guy hit that pole huh the guy that was driving, he hit that hard. He was going fast, right? So do you guys see how much damage? He was turning quick. Bro, yeah, he hit this hard, man. Yeah, just come on, for the bumper to break off, and the metal piece on the inside of the <laughs> Right? All right. Let's start getting my stuff ready. Free spool out my lines and walk them out. They don't give you much room to work with here. I couldn't get it off the side, nor would I want to. This is what I mean. That deck winch is going to go there. And that auxiliary line is going to go there. That way I can pull this thing back, winch it back with two lines. And get it as straight as possible. Their suggestion was I just lift up the rear and reverse out of here. But that's horrible because I'm going to have to... Uh, there's not enough room for a straight shot. I'll have to go forward and back and communicating with the other driver is just too much work. Too dangerous. If he slams on the brakes or anything, it could be disastrous.
Again, this trailer is empty, man. I'm seeing no weight on this. You're the yard go driver? Oh, well, well I'm, just, I'm just here for now. I'm not a, I'm a delivery guy. Do you, you know where that guy is? He's been on paperwork. That guy? Who's driving that yard go? Yeah, he's, uh, I'm driving it right now because he's going to go do a drug test. Can, can you back up hey, to the kingpin? Just back up to the kingpin and that's it, please. Uh, so connect it, right? Yes, sir. That way when I lift up in the rear, uh, there's pallets on the front. It's negligible, small weight, but I don't want it to teeter-totter on all those things. You put the yard goat under there and it gives it stability. I don't want to turn this recovery into a rollover. Oh, that's a lot more pallets than I thought. One, two, three, four, five, six rolls. Let me, uh, I'm gonna have to drop my auxiliary and jump up there and put it on the second stage. Second stage is that D-ring up there. That way when I drop down, I can go to that D-ring because at this angle, I'm gonna be hitting Hulk. You see what I mean? With my boom up, it's no bueno. Go here. My big flipper, Alex is spoiled. He's got two deck winches. Another hot day too. We're experiencing a heat wave this week, guys. I think highs of like 95. Can't wait for that comment from the dude that lives in the Sahara Desert. 95 is cold. That's nothing. Sweet. Now for my lift points on the trailer. Oh man, this thing's all kinds of messed up, but my frame grab hook right here on each side. Which would be great because I'm only lifting the rear end of an empty trailer. cool thing about a rotator is if you see here that line of action isn't really straight with the rear of the trailer with the rotator once I'm airborne with the rear I can swing it to light it up as close as possible Got my rinky dink connections. Wow, 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 wow. It's 
So it's still welded on from here. One spot in the back. Hilarious. Let's get my Omega links. <clears throat> All right. Step one complete. Trailer is airborne. So I can either go to the rims themselves in between the dual tires right there on the rim. Now, nah, right here is the best bet. You don't want to go too high or too low. Wham, bam. And this one, I want to shorten up a lot. This one's longer, so I'm going to use the oblong of a, a car, my car fishing hook. This is grade 10, 5 16 chain. Compare it to a small 3 8 chain, and look at that. Which should work great here because all I'm doing is pulling it with the brakes on. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, so this one, I'm gonna just use a shackle. I don't wanna put the oblong through the hook of the half inch foundry grab hook, even though I could. It'll pivot much better here. Sweet. Let's see my plan come to fruition. That quench has tension. Now we just put tension on the auxiliary line. Now we start by bringing the axle from this end. And then apply tension here so it comes up a little crooked. Sweet. Almost. That might be okay. Now see what I mean about rotating? If I set it down, it won't sit straight. All I gotta do is hit this button. Ooh, that should be good. I'm feeling very good about this. Maybe just a bit more on the green.
That is ugly. Of course it's gonna slide off, yeah. That's what I'm gonna do is chain it. Oh, I, I gotta chain it, I just wanna set this on. This is only to make you go forward yeah. and to the left and part, that's it. That's all this is good for. For sake, cause you want me to put on the ready line, which uh... I'll follow you. If you flip over, I got your back. <laughs> oh. That I need to get rid of. It's kind of holding me back right there. Yeah, that's not gonna happen, huh? I guess I can cheat the system by going up with it and then dropping it on the pin like this like that compress it then lift it up and do it again see by compress it I mean this now it's folded in on itself Now I drop it. <clears throat> Better. Good enough for me. All right. Now I keep slight tension on this just in case anything happens. I don't want the trailer to hurt me. So like barely any tension. So the trailer can't physically fall down. Now we get to chaining. Buddy, you done messed up real good with this. Perfect. All right, guys, I did not want to bore you with all the rigging. So I finished all that. Now I'm just doing tiny nump, and I'll show you guys why I did this method compared to the five other methods I could do. Let me just get some tension on this, get rid of the slack. All right, you can probably see better zoomed out right here. But the reason I did this in the next fashion is as he's going forward, I don't want the axle to be able to shift that way or this way. Now, I'm not too worried about the forward movement because it's still attached right here, right there. So it's not gonna go forward more. It's too clunked up but this will prevent it from coming off. <clears throat> that way I could monitor it. If, if he goes forward, if it starts tracking, I can just stop him. And if you remember my excavator video, the one last week, the most hardest job I've done, I mentioned that on that one, I didn't have a plan B, C, or D. And what that means is a lot of times on these jobs, I'll get people saying, how come you didn't do it this way or that way? And, and that's because there's always multiple ways to do a job. I most likely thought of the way and just went with the one I, I thought was best. Like for example, this one, you can get a con gear or they call them flat top dollies, which is a set of wheels that goes under the kingpin. Well, then I would have to rear tow this thing out of here and I can't make that turn. Same thing with pulling a forward. You saw how tight that spot was, me backing in, that's why I included that. So that's not a good option at all. This one I thought was the best, considering the degree of damage All right, this is done. For the driver to go forward and test my theory if I did the right choice. Okay, sir, ready? Ready. 
Jump in the cab? Yeah. Raise your landing gear first, I mean. Yeah. And it's Jump in the cab, release the brakes, and go five feet. That's all I need. I want to see how, how this does. Five feet. Yeah. Look, that's a DOT bumper. I checked, man, your airlines are good. If there's a micro tear that we didn't hear about, I'll just cage them, but let's see if you can go forward. So right here, if I put that flat top dolly slash con gear, whatever you want to call it, and I tow it out of here, I'm not making that turn. Where I backed in from, same thing the other way. I'm married to it. That's a horrible option. I guess the other one, also horrible option is the a land off of the trailer and remove this, but I'd have to cut all that. I tend to go with the path of least resistance. <laughs> Look at that. My Mickey Mouse job worked. <laughs> oh, the stuff that makes me laugh, man. Watch him hit another pole and make it worse. And now with the power of uh, video editing, I'm gonna put away my truck in one second and come back to you guys. All right, truck is put away. Now I'm gonna flip a Yui so my front end can face him. I need eyes on that rear as he makes that turn. And I can't do that in reverse. Oh, it is hot, Josh. I want to laugh, I got a fridge in my truck and it's empty. Wah, wah. Scratch that. I got organic apple juice. All right, back to my point earlier about if I had put a flat top dolly on the rear to tow it out of here, there's no way I'd make this right here. I had a three pointed as it was without a trailer in back of me. It's just not possible. You know, it gets super tight right here. Oh, it looks like they're gone, but there's a lot of truck movement right here in and out. It's like a little mini refinery. All right, just like that, we are here. My way is pretty much the same amount of work as I would have done at the others. I just think a bit quicker and more stable. No matter what, I had to lift the rear of the trailer. That was a given. And instead of using my Milwaukee tools to cut the rest of the railing off and then somehow drop the trailer or use my deck winch to drag this thing out of the way, then I have to come back and get it anyways. Just a mess. I think this way is the absolute best way. straight's the easy part. I'm low key worried about that turn. Now, because of the extensive damage, it was impossible to get it super flush. I was worried it was gonna track just a bit, which it is, but manageable. And once we get here, we're pretty much in the clear. It gets a lot wider. I'm gonna just follow him to uh, his spot and then get my rigging. So hopefully no hiccups from here to there. Perfect. Oh my God, you guys think I'm exaggerating? I just noticed something. Look what my temperature gauge says. 109 degrees. Now granted, these things are always just a tiny bit hotter than what it is, but it's, it's every bit of like kissing 100 out here. I think it's tomorrow and today are a heat wave. 
September the 5th in Los Angeles and it's a heat wave. We'll figure. Today's also the two month birthday or anniversary of my son, Aries. The July 5th baby. Very close to 4th of July. Not sure if I would have liked that better, but happy two months, Aries. how I feel about going on the streets. I thought we were going to stay within the facility. Mickey Mouse drop held up, guys. If anything was gonna happen, it would have been right there. We're coming up on another turn. the chains that I had from the front to the back prevented that axle from coming off right there that's all I needed is that forward movement restricted now that was the second hardest turn now we're in the clear it does look pretty funny though I gotta admit This driver's pretty cool, man. A lot of people would have just got scared. I'm glad he had the guts to just push it forward. I was just talking to the driver to move off the way. Which because spot are you trying to get into? Well, I don't want to go in there because I have to do like a new 45 degree angle, you know what I mean? So I don't want to, I, I'm not going to be able to put it in there because I have to do like a whole 95 degree angle to put so it in there. So is there any room on the back side to just well, park it up against the fence? Well, the well, thing is, turning that turn, you have to be sharp turning. I don't know if it doesn't shift. Because right now when I turn in here, so those turns were the most brutal because yeah. it goes up and it hits. It hits and, and it's off. And it's off. But that, that's the worst. Yeah. This is going to be a lot easier. So yeah, because he said we're trying to put it in the back far north. If you can back in, whatever's easy. If you can back it in there, if it'll allow you to back in, then that's fine. So I'm thinking if I go this way. Oh, it's gonna move because the whole thing's. I mean, look at this. Yeah, I know. It's not even sitting on there. Right? Look at all this. But it held up phenomenal, man. It did. The one I was worried about is making the left out of here and then the left in here. And, yeah. But because there's no, it's not secured on the back, of course it's going to swing. Yeah, it's going to swing, so it goes up and down. I thought I was but no, but you handled that very well. So, okay, my question is right here, bro, check it out. If I go up I don't want to do it like when I back it in, I hold like the whole 40, 95 inches to turn in. I'm trying to put it in one of these right here. So I'm thinking if I go that way. You know what, since you got the yard goat man, you can probably sneak in through here, through here. and go right there and, and then back it in very steady. Right. Very steady. You just connect it to the far, farthest one here, right? But I won't have to go and And I'll be right here, yeah. Yeah, this driver's pretty cool, he knows what's up.
enough space because of that trailer to do the plan he wanted. Round two. opening up much 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 wider to compensate for the 53 footer and that's what he's worried about is that barrier It's too tight of a squeeze. I had to move my truck, but this guy got it, man. I'm gonna go straight in out and then back it up into one of those spots. And then from there I can de-rig. Oh, it's not easy. reason it looks like it's gonna flip it's leaning it's teeter tottering because it's not centered on here all that metal and debris it's too jagged and messed up but after this straightening out right here he's got it it's his it's a straight shot back now Now see if I had a flat top dolly and I was attached to the kingpin, I'd be towing it from here. Well, now when I back it into whatever spot, it's facing backwards the way they don't want it. This plan was literally the best one. Literally, figuratively, and technically. And emotionally. Let's get my gloves and we'll de-rig. Simple but effective, guys. Almost done taking this off. It wasn't the prettiest job because look what I'm dealing with. But to get it from that point A to point B, absolutely did the trick. And if you'll notice, just really quick, let me take this binder off. I purposely went on the outside right here and through here. Now, if I put the chain over here, there's a lot of room to travel between the chamber here and the leaf spring. I didn't want any travel, so I put it on the outside and I put the chain in through here. Little things like that just kept it nice and secure. And now we just take everything off. All right, guys, just like that, we are done. Hope you all enjoyed and stay tuned for Josh's breakdown with me, your host, Josh. Welcome back, everyone, to another fun edition of Josh's breakdown with your hosts, Josh and star Josh. So this job, um, these ones are always my favorite, these out of the box jobs. I love them because it's not really something you can prepare for. It's just one of those things you gotta use like your past experience and just knowledge of rigging and everything to get it done. I went, in this case, like I mentioned, the path of least, the path of least resistance. So the land all was out of the question. 
getting a Kong Gear flat top dolly out of the question. In this case, the easiest way was, you know, the way it came in is the way it's going out with a huge band-aid in the form of my chains. Well, the only part, it was kind of iffy if you see at the end when it was like teeter-tottering when he was leaving the facility. Now that's obvious because the trailer's not flush on the rails no more. There's nothing but jagged metal, broken stuff protruding everywhere. So of course it was gonna sit like that. All my chaining was for is to make sure that axle does not come off the trailer and we get from one parking lot to the other side of the parking lot. That's it, and it worked well. So if we were going further down, obviously you do um, you know, a strap over the trailer back to itself. There's a lot of other things I would do. In fact, if we were going far, you just, then you use a flat top dolly or you can use a, a land doll. But point A to point B in such a short distance, I believe this was the best bet. Two, I wanna bring up, um, first apologies, the first half of the video sucks in terms of quality. Um, I'm always buying the latest and greatest camera equipment, buying it, not getting it, you know, and doing reviews on every piece of equipment. But all the DJI stuff, Alex has his Canon, I got my Sony. I film on my Sony these breakdowns, the FX3. And I got the new Insta360 GO 3S. It's a great camera, but um, well first let me show you. It's this small. Damn. Tiny. Let me just pull this up to the camera so you guys can see. Look at that. Now this little beast is 4K, believe it or not. The reason the video sucked though was because I got these ND filters on. ND filters are like sunglasses before your camera, so when it's really bright outside, it'll take away a lot of that brightness and then you can mess with your shutter and all that. So I had a too high of an ND filter on and it, it threw everything else off. The stabilization was a little jerky because of that, so I do apologize. Going forward, um, this will be a lot better footage, I promise you guys, don't let this one video deter you. And for those of you, I guarantee you there's going to be comments saying the quality sucks compared to the other videos without getting this far in the video. So shout out to you guys for that one. And last but not least, the elephant in the room here is I, obviously, I'm not filming this live in front of a giant cutout of my breakdown segment. I have this on a green screen. If you guys are fans of the channel, you know I'm always buying the latest and greatest technology to make these videos just pop. I love sending out from the competition. I First of all, I don't see any other tow company post as frequent of these huge jobs that I get. Not just regular towing or a, a simple lift or whatever like that, but I mean like that excavator video, just the stuff we get ourselves into. And not that no one else can, it just it comes with the territory of being in the heart of Los Angeles and all the contracts we have. You know, my, my dad started getting all these accounts from the 80s whenever up until now. We've just grown to become that big where we get these jobs from, whether it's our contracts or other companies, tow companies, crane companies, whatever, we love it. So that's you know one benefit I have and to showcase that really and also stand out from the competition, it's the quality. I, I feel like a lot of the other videos I do, ex ignore this one, you know, I'm always filming in 4K, I color edit everything myself. Sometimes I admit it's to my detriment. I'm always on time constraints and I post two long form videos a week. With my schedule, it's impossible. I, I always get asked, like, who, who edits my stuff? I do everything. I do the thumbnails, the titles, uh, the descriptions, every single thing from start to finish. Of course, Alex films now, too, which is awesome. But it puts me at a backlog now because he's running so many calls and I just don't have the time to do three videos a week like I, I've really been wanting to. So with that in mind, I got this green screen. I got lighting. I just really want to make these videos stand out so much more, give them a more cinematic feel to it. That doesn't mean Hollywood, I'm not gonna go all dramatic. It's still the same videos, it's just raw, it's us, it's joking, it's us tackling these crazy jobs. But with the cool technological you know, tick to it, with this green screen I can do stuff like this. And now I'm in the video. So on those parts that I've been doing where I, I pause the video or I zoom in and I do an infographic, put in a box with some words in it, well now I can just come into the video and explain like, hey you see where I'm lifting right here, the reason I'm lifting right there, you know, that's pretty cool. I can also bring in Alex. I can bring in my dad for this stuff. I can do an interview on the moon. Cool, right? Okay, yeah, that's a gimmick, but you get the picture, right? I can do a lot with this, and I do it for the fans. I'm obviously, you know, I'm, I do the jobs. I don't sit at home all day and watch the YouTube videos. I just do this to, like I said, separate myself from everyone and just to be the perfectionist that I am and to give you guys the best entertainment value for a tow truck company channel. It sounds weird to say that, right? Coming from a tow company channel and I'm all about this technology, but that's just who I am. I get pictures sent to me all the time from fans from all over the world 
enjoying my videos on their big screen TV in their living room with their kids and grandpa and stuff. That's awesome to me. I love that. Uh, this is one that was sent to me a couple weeks back after the excavator video. Stuff like that warms my heart. That's awesome to know that I got not only that much reach, but like you guys are invested this much in this channel like that. So, you know, I pour my heart into this channel. I finally hit 150,000 subscribers because of you guys. Thank you so much. Quarter million is the next milestone. We'll hold my breath for this year, but hey, man, at this rate, we'll see. And as always, stay tuned because you already know I got a lot of good stuff coming up. So with that in mind, hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know what you think of this green uh, green screen stuff. You know, maybe give me some comments of how I can implement it, what you guys would like to see more because I'm always taking as much input as I can to make this channel better. Peace out, y'all.